While waiting for the Greenhead prototype PCBs to arrive, I took some time the last two weeks to pick up on some loose ends from previous videos. One of them is an updated version of the cell phone based DCC and Loconate toolbox that several of my viewers have asked for. In this video I show you a new DCC viewer that allows you to monitor DCC commands as they are coming down the track. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. Before I get started I would like to welcome all new subscribers to the channel. Thank you for your interest and support. The channel has now reached 1000 subscribers which is more than I thought would be possible for what I consider a niche within another niche channel. Just think about it. Model railroading is not exactly a mainstream hobby and then only a fraction of all model railroaders is interested in using sensors and microcontrollers to build components for their own layout control system as it is the goal of the IOTT channel. So, a big welcome and thank you to all new subscribers and for all the other viewers if you are a member of our niche within a niche community but have not subscribed so far, please consider doing so and also click the bell icon so you will receive a notification when new videos come out. Ok, back to the topic. I think we all agree on this. DCC is a great way to control locomotives and switches individually when it works. But most of us probably have experienced situations where things did not work as intended and then it becomes difficult to figure out what is going wrong. Is it a faulty decoder? Or maybe a problem with the track power or a bug in the command station? Or maybe a corrupted communication between the throttle and the command station. Or maybe, again, just me, too stupid for the system. There are tons of potential problem sources, but we can only see one thing. It does not work. To figure out why that is, some diagnosed tools are useful. A simple voltmeter is already great to check if there is track power. But with DCC it would also be beneficial to see what information is coming along the track. That's why I built the DCC viewer that displays DCC commands in real time and plain English on the cell phone. So you can always see if your DCC commands are flowing even when working underneath the layout because, as we all know from experience, that's where problems usually are. So, let me show you how it works. First, a quick look into the required infrastructure and then an overview of the software itself. And as always, you can download the code from my GitHub page listed in the description below and try it for yourself. The DCC viewer makes use of the DCC to MQTT mode added to the IOTT stick in version 131 of the stick software. Video number 53 has more information on this. To make it work you need a DCC interface board to pick up the DCC commands from the track. The other end is connected to an IOTT stick which is configured in DCC to MQTT mode and sends the DCC information via Wi-Fi to an MQTT broker. As always you can run your own broker in your network, for example as I do on a Raspberry Pi, or you can set the stick to send the information to a public broker somewhere in the cloud. I have shown some examples for that in video number 48. The final element is Node-RED, which is a public domain software you can run on a PC or on a small computer like the Raspberry Pi. Again, Video number 48 has more information on that. The DCC viewer is programmed in Node-RED with just four nodes. The first node is the MQTT connector that receives incoming DCC commands from the broker. It needs to be configured to the same broker and topic as set on the IOTT stick. If this is the case, the DCC commands will show up in the form of JSON strings. 
The second node converts these JSON strings into JSON objects. This really is a standard process and the JSON node requires no configuration at all. It is just inserted in the flow. All it does is converting from JSON string to JSON object. The actual DCC viewer that you see on the cell phone is defined in the HTML template labeled DCC flow. It goes together with the second template named CSS etc that contains the style sheet that defines the color and shape of the graphical elements of the viewer. So the interesting thing where all work is done is the DCC flow node. Let's have a closer look inside. A double click on the node opens it in the editor. In the top section we set the node properties. The group property defines the web page on which the viewer will be displayed. You can define pages as you like. My preferred way is to have a separate page for each screen. So one for the DCC viewer, another one for the smartphone throttle from video number 51 and so on. The size option determines the size of the display. 7 by 12 is probably the size that fills the screen for most smartphones with a large screen. But you may adjust it to fit the size of your device. The name field lets you specify the name that is shown in the flow and should be unique. Other than that you can choose whatever you want. The two additional checkboxes remain unchecked for this application. The actual code for the viewer is all in the template field. It is a complete web page that could be run on any web server and consists of the typical header and body sections of an HTML document. The header section has some basic definitions and the JavaScript section that has all the functions needed for receiving, decoding and displaying the DCC commands. We will look into this in a minute, but first let's scroll down to the body section and have a look at the display elements of the page. In the page body we first have the definition of the two tables that provide space for the DCC commands to be displayed. One is for the one-time commands, the other for cyclical commands. As you probably know in DCC there is a continuous flow of messages sent by the command station consisting of repeated commands for the mobile decoders. The reason is that there is a good chance that mobile decoders lose contact to the track once in a while, go through a reset and need to have speed and function information refreshed. Stationary decoders on the other hand are typically connected using solder joints or screw terminals, so there is no real risk of losing power. For this reason, switch and signal commands are only sent if there is a status change. For the viewer, however, it does not make sense to display all the cyclical commands as they come along the track. Not only would it be too much for slower phones, but you, the user, might not be able to derive useful information from about 110 to 120 commands flickering by every second. For this reason, I only display an update if there is a change to speed or function of a locomotive. But I display those commands in a separate table so that you are always aware that these commands are constantly repeated. As you see in the definition, each table consists of a header with the title, followed by 10 data lines for the commands, and I even put in a space as placeholder for lines if there is no data to be displayed. By doing so, the table always has the same height and therefore always looks the same in the browser window. Below that data tables is a third table that serves as container for the two buttons. One is to freeze the flow for reading, the other is to clear the display. Color and shape of the buttons are defined in the CSS node. When the button is clicked, the function that is attached as onClick parameter gets executed. Those functions are defined in the JavaScript in the header section as we will see in a minute. Finally, there is a page footer 
that defines the gray bar with the IOTT text in it. That's it for the static elements. Now let's have a look into the functionality. Scrolling up just a little bit to the end of the script section, we come to the function that drives the entire viewer. It basically installs a watch function in the template, which looks out for new messages sent to the template and initiates processing in case the message is a valid JSON object with the topic DCCBC. This function is also the location where you would add other topics if you wanted to create additional functionality. So let's follow the processing of an incoming message. The process line function that is called with the payload as parameter is just a few lines of the script. It scans the incoming message for a message type attribute, which can be switch, signal, local speed or local function. It also can be idle, but that type of message is ignored. It then creates a message string to display and determines in which table the message will be displayed. Next, it puts the new message to the beginning of a data array for the selected table and deletes any messages at the end of the table that are no longer displayed. Finally, it calls the update display function to refresh the tables. Update display does nothing else than calling the update table function for each table with the corresponding data array. The update table function first gets a link to the corresponding table in the HTML section. Then it sets the text of each line to the respective text from the data table. And that is all what happens if a new message is received. Further up the script are the functions that deal with the input from the two buttons. The process freeze function toggles the freeze status variable and updates the button text. That happens every time the button is clicked. And the process clear function calls clear table for each table. The clear table function first deletes the data buffer and then updates the table with spaces in each line, which as mentioned before prevents the table from collapsing and it indeed looks like an empty table. Then there is the init display function, which is called from the HTML script after startup and a 500 millisecond delay. All it does in the DCC viewer is initializing the freeze status to false. But it is a good placeholder for more complex functionality in other scripts, like the smartphone throttle for example. So you may want to have a look into that as well. Finally. At the beginning of the script there are some variable definitions and that's it for the DCC viewer program. All we need to do now is click on done to save it to the node, then click on deploy to make it available in the Node-RED user interface. Now we can use the web browser on the smartphone and connect to the Node-RED user interface by entering the IP address and port 1880 followed by slash UI. The web page menu now has the DCC viewer option and when we click it, our DCC viewer is ready and starts displaying the messages as they come along the track. Yes, it's that simple, but quite useful. If you want to build this tool for yourself, follow the link in the description below for more information. As mentioned before, you can download the DCC Viewer script from my GitHub page. There you also find the IoTT stick software and information about how to build a DCC interface, including schematics and production data for the PC board. Or to avoid the risk that comes with building your own hardware, you can order an assembled and tested DCC interface along with the pre-programmed IoTT stick from my Tindy page, also listed below. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general, because YouTube likes the likes. 
Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.